So Japan has a huge problem, right? Almost 10 million abandoned empty homes called Akia spread out all over the country. But as I've said before, it's not only in the countryside, way up in Akita, in Hokkaido. They're in Tokyo or Osaka as well. In this video, I will teach you the six most common ways of buying property real estate in Japan. How Japanese people buy the real estate and some social and cultural differences. And if you're thinking about making a deal, finding your dream home or a cheap or a free house in Japan. Point four, five and six would be my best recommendation for you. Point number six is how I got my Sangenjaya house here in Tokyo. So stay tuned and watch till the end. Hi, my name is Anton. I'm originally from Sweden, but I've been living in Japan for four and a half years. I also have experiences in buying these Akias, empty homes, and I buy them, I renovate them, and now I live in one. I'm not a real estate agent, but I have a lot of friends in the field who taught me a lot, and this is a book that I've finished. I don't have a license, but I think I know the rules and laws pretty well. I've also bought several properties here, so I think I have some experience and I hope I can teach you something. So number one, the easiest way of getting into real estate in Japan is to look at websites like Sumo at the home. There are several of them. You just scroll on a map. Oh, I'm interested in this area. I'm interested in that area. Shibuya, for example, you check around, you set your price tag. I want to buy a house up to, I don't know, $300,000 or $200,000. There are deals like that. I mean, Tokyo is expensive. You can buy houses here for tens of millions of dollars as well. But you get what I'm saying. Like Zillow in America or Hemnet in Sweden. You can scroll. It's pretty fun to make a market research. It's a good way to scroll and feel the market. There is also a lot of ads for real estate agencies who put their ads within the listing and they make you contact you straight there. In most cases, you don't have to use these particular real estate agents and you can use another one. Maybe you find a cheaper one. Maybe you have a friend who can do it for you. The real estate agents in Japan, they get a commission from the sales price, usually 3% or 3.3% with the taxes. But if you have a friend or you make a deal, maybe you can get down to 1.5, 2%. And they take these from both sides. So if the same real estate agency represents both the seller and the buyer, they get in total 6%, right? So be careful when you call up the people from these Sumo or Atto Home places. This would be the first stage for me. And this is how I started doing it. I like Sumo better than Atto Home. I was looking at Sumo and I called the real estate agent up and I told him, I wanna look at this property. And he showed me that property. And then he also had a few other ones. So we went and looked at three or four properties in one day. And that was the first time I saw real estate from the inside in Japan. This was about four years ago when I've only been living here for about half a year. And this, in my experience, is also the most common way to look at properties here in Japan. Number two, contact a broker. Japan is all about relationships. You establish a relationship with a broker, they will show you deals that are not even on the market sometimes. Or you explain to them what you're looking for and they can show you something similar. Maybe the thing in your price range is not available in this area, but like in the area next to it, it is. They have connections. They can show you around. They can teach you. They can show you how to get a loan. Cause if you don't buy the place, they're not getting a commission. And this is also one of the reasons why if you go to these brokers or if you go to Sumo at the home or you get a broker connection that is just thinking about money, if they sell you a cheap home, they're not getting as big of a commission. If you go and look at dirt cheap houses for, I don't know, $10,000, their commission of 3% is not so much in the end. The brokers usually take a starting fee of 500 to 1,000 bucks plus these 3%, but even if you buy a house for only $10,000, their commission is not gonna be that high, right? Third one, buy new from developers. I don't have experience in this, but I see them kind of everywhere. They're pretty hard on their marketing and pretty aggressive on their sales. I see them in big crossings, like waving like big signs, come please buy this house, new built. Photoshop beautiful pictures is usually aimed for families and people with a bit higher budget. I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand for a brand new built house in my area. Uh, usually very tiny. 30 square meters on each floor, two, three floors. And I've also seen houses like this. If they're not sold after a year or two, they tear them down and then they build something completely different. I made a video about this on my Japanese YouTube channel and even Japanese people thought it was kind of crazy. 
But this is a very normal way for a typical Japanese family to buy their houses. A developer buys an old house, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years old, with a bigger plot of land, then they divide the land into two, and then they build two smaller houses, and then they sell them, make a profit, right? This is common in Sweden as well, but we have a bit more land, so you still get a garden. These houses usually don't. These houses and the plots of land are sometimes very small. Sometimes I've seen lands that are like 35 square meter big, so they're small. Before we get to number four, which is a very interesting way of buying real estate in Japan, I just wanted to talk a little bit about cultural differences between Japan and the Western world, the way we look at properties. In America, in Europe, we see properties as investment, right? Japanese people do as well, but they see the house as a commodity. It depreciates in value, and after 20, 30 years, the house itself basically has zero value, which means that they don't really maintain the houses, or they haven't really. Recently, there's been a huge boom in renovations, and for sustainable reasons, I think this is the way to go. It's, I mean, they have beautiful old temples here that's been around for hundreds of years and as long as you maintain something you keep it up to date with earthquake safety maybe it's more expensive but in my opinion it's not sustainable to just tear a 20 year old house down or as i explained earlier a two year old house down just to build something brand new what do you think please let me know in the comments so japanese people kind of look like buying a house in the same way as buying a car and japanese people likes houses brand new in sweden for example we look at old houses you saved this house, right? If you renovate it. In Japan, they're not using old house. They're using used house. It's not new, it's used. Which is a very chuko bukken. And except like vintage clothing is very popular here, but vintage houses, not so much, unfortunately. I like them. This house I'm sitting in right now is almost 90 years old. Number four bank retaken objects. I don't have experience in this. I've done a lot of research going to the court just to make it very clear. Japan doesn't live in the future. I get a lot of comments regarding this. Oh, Japan is so in the future, but they're still using facts here and it's very analog. Bank retaken objects, since like last year or two years ago, you can see them online. But if you want pre-access to what's going to be on the market, you need to go to the physical court where people sit with maps and kind of scans and takes photos of these. Usually smaller or bigger real estate companies do this. You can get houses there for like half the market value. You gotta be really careful. Maybe there's a family feud and stuff. Maybe someone is squatting in the house. Uh, there is a lot of things to take in consideration, but usually these houses have been abandoned or empty for a long time as well. There might be a tragedy involved and something. And as I said, I don't have experience in this. I've just done research regarding this. When was this, last year, two years ago? So these bank retaken objects, they're sold on auction and they're silent auctions. So you never know what the other people are bidding. Maybe it's a house worth a million dollars and someone only bids, I don't know, 600,000. But when you put the bid, you need to put 15% of your bid in cash. You need to pay it in for the bid to be valid. It's a crazy way to sell something in my opinion. And if you don't win the silent auction, but then the money goes back. But if you cannot come up with the remaining 85%, you lose your deposit, so be careful. Also, you usually cannot get a loan to buy these ones, which means that the bank retaken objects basically only attracts bigger actors in the real estate industry and cash buyers. Usually the interest rates of buying a new Japanese house is about 0.4%. So it's easier to not buy from Kyobai. Or number five, the Akia banks. I get a lot of questions regarding how do you buy an Akia? How do you buy an abandoned empty house in Japan, especially in Tokyo or Osaka? And the reason why real estate agents won't help you getting these properties is because they don't get a big commission out of this, right? They sell a bigger house, a more expensive house, and they get their 3.3% plus their other fees. But if they sell you a house worth $0 transaction, how much do they get? You do the math, right? So the way to buy an Akia is usually to go through the municipality or the Akia banks. The municipality usually runs the Akia banks. And as I said before, Japan is very analog and there are a lot of things going on off market. So my best suggestion would be to go to the municipality and ask, what kind of Akias do you have in stock? It, it sounds weird, it's, it's a full on house. It used to be someone's life was there, right? But things that are online is not everything they have. But Akia banks and municipality, you can buy houses for like a thousand dollars or even 
free sometimes. So I used to live in Italy for modeling and I did a lot of research. I've always been fascinated with uh, real estate. And I remember they had a similar project going on in Abruzzo, north of Rome, where they had like a one euro deals for old, beautiful Italian homes. You bought it for one euro, but the joke in, the condition was that you had to renovate it within five years. It was fun to do research regarding this. But Japan works completely different. And they have very strict and not so strict laws as well. Also things you cannot really learn by not doing this. And they have also really strict laws here for earthquake safety, right? But some of the laws here are not as strict. In Sweden, for example, you cannot paint your house pink or do some outrageous color in the neighborhood because the, the, the state kind of plans the area. In Japan, it doesn't really work like that. And that's one of the beauty of Japan as well. You see like a crazy fancy concrete building and then right next to it, it's the really old house. And then right next to that, it is a pink building. It's very fascinating with Japan. And then we come to number six. This is how I got my Sangenjaya house, houseintokyo.com, that you probably saw on Caleb Simpson's video. Thank you, Caleb, for being my friend. And thank you guys for watching that video. You walk around in an area you like, and you look for abandoned houses. Maybe you've already printed a beautiful note. Hello, how are you? Uh, would you be interested in selling your house to me? Or a little bit more attaining that So you approach them. I wouldn't do this if I couldn't speak good Japanese and if you're not respectful of your surroundings. You like an area, you walk around there, you will most likely see abandoned houses. 10 million in this beautiful country. Even in Daikanyama, Nakameguro, Shibuya, there are abandoned houses. There is one famous abandoned house right next to Rupangi Crossing. But usually the famous abandoned houses, you cannot get a hold of the owners. That's why they're abandoned. I'm sure hundreds of real estate agencies have tried to buy that property up. Like right next to it, they're building a huge, I don't know, 15 story house, probably spending millions and millions of dollars. And if they could have bought that house too, they could have built a bigger house, right? The land itself is probably worth, I don't know, $5 million or something. But it's an old rundown house from Showa era. It might be that the building has sentimental value to someone. Uh, maybe someone passed away in their surroundings and they don't have energy to take care of it. Maybe they live five hours away. There are many reasons why these houses are abandoned. And in my case, the owner didn't think it had any value. So you might be lucky, maybe you won't be. But if you're gonna do this, please be very respectful. Japan is a high context culture and if you don't live here or you understand the unwritten rules or the real rules about Japan, I wouldn't recommend this and I would go through the municipality or the bigger real estate organizations. Or if you have a friend who does real estate. Again, I'm not a real estate agent and I'm not a financial advisor, so uh, please take my advice not so serious. But I've done this journey, so I have a little bit of experience at least, despite just being a model. I hope you learned something and please let me know if there's anything you want to see in the comments. Japan is beautiful, full of opportunities, amazing food everywhere, and I love living here. And I'll keep making content for you guys in English now as well. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I'll see you very soon again. Anton in Japan.